Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I am going to take you through one of my favourite books about drawing, The New Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. I will show you what you will get out of the book and how it will help you learn to draw. If you like my videos then hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I post a new video. With each video I aim to help people learn how to draw and improve their drawing skills. If you have watched my other videos or downloaded my free drawing resource guide, which I will leave linked in the description, you will know that I mention this book a lot. This book really helped me to learn how to draw by getting over my blocks and learning how to see. Even though I love this book and do recommend it, there are certain things about the book which I found outdated and do not love, which is why I want to give you this honest review. So let's dive right in. I have heard this book being described as the Bible of drawing, which I totally agree with. After you have gone through the book, you will have learnt the fundamentals of drawing, and with the beginning and after exercises, you will certainly see an improvement. Even though this is a book about drawing, I think you will be surprised by the amount of reading versus drawing exercises. There is a lot of reading to be done which can be off putting, which I definitely found difficult being dyslexic, but I would stick with it, it is worth it. The information within the book is invaluable and what makes this book such a great read. In the book, Betty Edwards begins by introducing herself and explaining how the book came about. Dr Betty Edwards is a professor with many years of experience. It really shows that she knows what she is talking about and how she has helped so many students learn to draw. She begins by introducing the five basic skills of drawing, different types of thinking, linking drawing and seeing, as well as discussing whether drawing is a natural skill or if it can be learned. A bit of a spoiler, it can be learned. She then takes you through three drawing exercises, a self-portrait, a person drawn from memory and a drawing of your hand. This is so you can compare your skills after you have read the book. I first read the book over 15 years ago and sadly I no longer have the drawings I did, but I do remember being pleasantly surprised with how quickly I had improved. The next sections are dense and theory based, but they really help me understand why people have difficulty drawing. This is down to the way people think. Edwards mentions Roger S. Spears' theory and that people are either left-brained or right-brained, and each side has a different way of thinking. Left is more logical and right is more artistic and intuitive. However, this theory is from the 1960s and is a little outdated. Recently, a team of neuroscientists set out to test this premise and it is not as clear cut. I will leave links to the article below if you would like to know more. So the way that I see this is, is that she is not speaking of specific locations in the brain, but more associated ways of thinking. But for ease, I will say left as logical and right as intuitive ways of thinking. So how does this affect drawing or help you improve? Basically, we spend our lives thinking in the left side of the brain for survival, which is, if I walk into this wall, it will hurt. The brain is quickly making judgments of objects around us so we can go on about with our day. These are stored in your brain. You know what it is and you know what it looks like. So when you come to draw an object, you have a conflict between what you think you see and what you actually see. She says this is a reason why people are still drawing at the same level as they did as a child. Your right side of thinking is looking at the lines, shapes and shadows that make up an object, unlike the left which is quickly making judgments. This is just my small summary, Edwards goes into much more detail. To help with drawing, you need to switch from the left side of thinking to the right side of thinking, which is why this book is called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. Betty Edwards then takes you through a number of different drawing exercises, which will show you how you can switch to the different way of thinking. 
I won't discuss these here because you need to first do the exercises without knowing why for it to work. For that reason, I really do recommend the book. People who seem to have a natural gift at drawing have a natural way of slipping into this way of thinking, which on a side note is linked to dyslexia. I explored the link between dyslexia and creativity on my master's course and if people are interested I can make another video about this later. I hope you are enjoying this review so far. If there are any other drawing books you would like me to review then please let me know in the comments. Edwards then takes you through a number of other exercises which covers the five basic skills of drawing, again while getting you into the right side of the brain. The five skills are number one, the perception of edges, number two, the perception of spaces, three, the perception of relationships, four, the perception of light and shadows, and five, the perception of the whole. You will do another hand drawing and she covers things such as negative space and the basic unit, which will have heard me mention in previous videos. I did enjoy some of the exercises, but especially towards the end, I found them a bit complex and not that easy to follow. However, most were useful, especially for getting people to think and see in different ways. Some exercises really did feel outdated, especially when the exercise asks you to use a sheet of acetate and a viewfinder. This has improved from the first edition, which I think I remember reading, that in the exercise she recommends sticking a sheet of acetate to the peak of a baseball cap. I understand why she suggests using acetate sheets and drawing a grid. It is the same way artists use a grid on photos and paper to translate the image. Only she is using it to draw from life, which is good. And I do find grids useful for teaching yourself how to flatten a 3D world into a 2D perspective and for comparing relationships. However, I find the way she explains to draw on the acetate and then repeat the drawing on the paper adds unnecessary steps which could be avoided, especially when we are trying to get out of the way of logical thinking. This is just my opinion, others may find these extra steps helpful. I would still use the skill she suggests, comparing lines and edges and looking at negative space, but without using a grid. I made a tutorial video where I explained this, which I will leave a card to here and a link below in the description. If you are having difficulty, then I would recommend practicing with a picture and a grid. This is great for practicing and helping you learn to see, but I would recommend not becoming too reliant on it. I will leave a link in the description to a helpful tool which I use for drawing grids. She ends the book by briefly mentioning colour and introducing two new drawing skills, drawing from memory and imagination. These sections are very brief and are covered in more detail in her other books. She also gives you an afterword which looks at the lost art of beautiful writing, which is very interesting. If you have stayed this far then thank you, I hope you have found this interesting. If you are looking for more helpful drawing advice and book recommendations, then sign up to my free drawing resource guide, which contains all the materials and helpful resources I use in my own drawings. The link is in the description below. I hope you have enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did and would like more, then I would appreciate it if you could please like, subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I next post a video. If you are looking for more ways to improve your drawing skills, then be sure to check out this video next. Thank you for watching.